He's showing up. You don't even have your sunscreen on. You're not ready. About to get burnt. Smoke Central. Give him something. Not only do we beat the high press, but we are converting. We're scoring goals. What's happening, my beautiful people? My name is Mike LaBelle. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I keep hearing from the community in the comments. How do we beat high pressure? Everybody's swarming me. They're all over me. I'm going to give you the five methods that I have been able to take advantage of. And it has led to success. Last weekend, 29 wins, one loss, road to glory, a team that you can attain. Not an expensive squad. I repeat, not an expensive squad. Because I know you look at a lot of the pros, the premium players and their consistency. And you say, I don't have the icons. I don't have Cristiano Ronaldo. I don't have him. Bappe, I don't have Neymar. Neither do I. And I wanted to provide this video to you. I put together something special. If you want more of this, drop a like. If you're one of the many that made a request for this video, drop a like. I'm going to give you the goods. I'm going to deliver on time. Maybe even an early delivery. Because if you want to be at a higher level in FIFA, an elite player, any of the elites, 3-2-1, you will have to be able to handle, adjust, and counteract high pressure player. It is going to happen. If you win the majority of your games, your opposition all day, every day is going to bring the heater. He's showing up and you don't even have your sunscreen on. You're not ready. You're about to get burnt. Smoke central. Comment below. Did this help you? Do you want more of it? What other ideas do you have for tutorials? Please and thank you. I'm trying to put out at least two tutorials per week. I have been uploading daily. Live streaming daily. Doing events. Spending a lot of time in this office space. Which is actually part of my living room. Might have to do an office tour. I want to hit something special as a milestone. An office tour at 300k. I'll put that projection out there. So subscribe. One more time. Subscribe. Please subscribe. It's not for me, it's for the pink hat. And all the gameplay live, twitch.tv slash Mike LaBelle in its fullest, uncut, unfiltered, in your face. Dirty Mike returns on the weekends for this sweaty spectacular. Number one, you have to be able to multitask. Use the radar. It's gonna become a great friend of yours. We're talking golden retriever, that's your dog, and then the radar and FIFA. You're dating both of them. Well, maybe not dating, but, but you're seeing both of them frequently, daily. That is a poor comparison. I do feel as if I am in a relationship with FIFA sometimes. If you don't know what the radar is, it's located right here. I'm pointing at it in game. It's gonna give you some more vision. It's got a different systematic approach. You can't stare at it, but you can glance. And every single professional player or high level or competitive FIFA player has mastered the ability to look at this and then also make a decision. What's the back line look like? Are there other center backs chasing back? What kind of positioning? Is it worth the risk? So number one, please master the radar. It is going to change a lot for you in terms of getting out of high pressure situations because you can take a quick look then you register what's open and you send it. Full send. Nelk Mike has arrived. Number two, the driven pass. This is gonna be your outlet of dreams, whether it's down the middle of the pitch or if you're going out wide, it's extremely overpowered. It's very valuable. It's a simple modifier when you're using the passing command. Hit RB if you're on the Xbox, R1 if you're on the PlayStation and it gives you a little more width. It's definitely coming in a lot quick. Back to the clips. You can see I've just overtaken possession and now I'm looking, I need help. I get the ball to Mendy. Perfect location to whip a pass because we're gonna hit the wings. This is why I like having width with my formations, whether it's a 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3, 4-4-2, 4-4-1-1, I can continue. It gives me a little more freedom and I'm playing the percentages. When you're going up against someone who is gifted with high pressure or is abusing the mechanics, you have to have a plan and you must be able to execute it with limited amounts of time. A lot of you get nervous, you get reckless. That's what high pressure is all about. Mendy is gonna hit Gareth Bale, but I wanna bring this example up in particular because the worst case scenario this might be a throw-in that's it but instead it starts our attack you see gareth first time to rashford and this is going to be a reoccurring theme firmino ah ball roll down fake shot pull it back one more time give him something not only do we beat the high press but we are converting we're scoring goals it's not just a way of getting out of the back no 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 we're transitioning from defense to offense and we're doing it quickly and we're doing it effectively i got more clip two still talking driven pass my opponent he's attacking we overtake possession we've got it with tomato I do want to mention, regardless, you cannot lose your sense of composure, your know-how. You still have to have the ability to look at the radar quickly, to make decisions. And out of these five that I'm showcasing, methods to break down 
or to get out of high pressure scenarios. A lot of times you're gonna combine a couple of them, maybe two or three in alignment that allow you to get out of trouble and then convert a counter attack. Samato. As I turn, that 360, that position, I've already looked at the radar. And the reason that you saw me 360 is, one, I didn't want to use the goalkeeper ideally, but I got a little bit of extra time just to take a quick second. Look at the radar. I know I'm wide open on the wings. Samato feeds the wings. And now we're here. Counterattack has begun. You see De Jong attacking space. I think it's Ben Yetter that's up there. And this is a nil-nil game, foot champs. I want you to understand the situation. There's a lot of pressure on right now. We haven't lost the game 80th minute. De Jong feeds the lane. Now we're just going to recycle. Gomez takes his space. It's just about relieving pressure, relieving some of that stress. Maybe some good fortune with the De Jong 360, as you see Ben Yetter starting to work. I didn't get as simple as the one pass and we're free, but it still turns into the exact same scenario. Alon, Gareth Bale, goal. That's the game winner. And I would never have an opportunity to be in this position if I was not able to get out of the back. Number three, I call this the reset. And this is underutilized. It's not talked about, but every pro player does this. You're welcome. Well, if you didn't know. As you should expect, or you're getting used to, my opposition is attacking. Once we get this defensive stop, in this case, a great save from Ter Stegen, who on a side note that was unrelated, was excellent this past weekend. We have Hazard, and I have not found the outlet. I'm not feeling comfortable with the pass. So what we're going to do here is take advantage of the sideline. Use that in an advantageous way. And this is what some people don't realize. If the ball goes out of bounds, not only do you get time to recover, but your opponent's tactics shift off. You're no longer dealing with a pressure after possession loss or a pressure on heavy touch. It's a reset. And you're able to go into more of your standardized or your normal way of attacking. You're no longer under the gun. So we're going to run the sideline with Hazard. If I beat him, perfect. But the ball goes out. We get a throw in. And now everything is back to normal. I'm no longer feeling... The, the swarm, I'm not feeling this agenda, I, I don't feel rushed, I can start my attack, and I'm more importantly maybe, is that I'm now in the offensive final third, I'm not in the defensive half anymore, I'm in a much better position, a superior position from where I started, use the sidelines. Number four, I call this the release, it's an outlet, but a lot of you don't want to do it, you refuse, but you've got to get past that, stop being stubborn, there are going to be moments where you have to Clear the ball deep. You need to alleviate that pressure. You have to. Maybe it's a position that's very uncomfortable. You're not able to play out. I have a perfect example. Welcome back to Dirty Mike Studio. My opponent is attacking. And it's a close match. Nil-nil. The ball's bouncing around. It comes back to the goalkeeper. And this position, it is not possible for me to have the confidence to play out of the back. Everyone is covered. My opponent's got four players inside the box to go with taking away a lot of easy outlets. So I've got to kind of go big. And what I'm hoping for is to win the header and start an attack. If not, at least it buys me some time where I'm in a better position. You cannot play out of every scenario in the beautiful ticky taka way. Back to the clip. Ter Stegen, we're going to go deep. And I, I suggest trying to aim towards your biggest player. Best chance to win some sort of 50-50 or offset an opposition just to make sure that the ball is not coming directly back at you. But I would like to add, especially in an example like this, Ter Stegen is already facing that way. Do not make this complicated. Get it out of there. Ter Stegen fills it up. He's under pressure. We've aimed out wide again. It's not perfect. I don't get the ball. My opponent can attack again. So be it. But nothing was lost. I repeat, nothing was lost. I haven't conceded. It's still nil-nil. Nothing has shifted. My opponent has to restart his attack. He has to recycle. Serious recycle. You can't do this all game. I repeat, you can't do this all game. But it should be one of the five methods that you're comfortable doing instinctively or adding into your gameplay if you want to relieve pressure. Number five. We're talking wing outlets, but more so revolving around through balls or threaded through balls. When this goes well, you get yourself a breakaway or just so much space to work. The ultimate counterattack. It can happen in the middle of the pitch as well, but for yours truly, it's typically down the wings. It's a safer method. I'm all about playing percentages if you haven't figured that out yet. I like to be unorthodox, but I like to have structure with being unorthodox or being creative or being dynamic. That combination, that balance. Meanwhile, back in the lab, my opposition has a free kick. We are going to overtake possession inside the box and we're able to find a little bit of space to work with. 
And then this is the scenario. We have a 1v1. Doesn't happen all the time, but if you've got the right player, the right personnel, and you know there's not a lot of coverage, and that's what you could see here in the upper portion, I've got a classic one-on-one, -on -one, and maybe even more importantly, the other defenders aren't really in the picture. So if I win this one-on-one, -on -one, if I'm able to hit a through ball here, if I beat this guy, I could be gone like Donkey Kong, and we know in FIFA 21 that pace matters. And if I recall this clip correctly, there's going to be a shove of dreams. We're talking strength. This was my affirmation that Ben Yedder still has Ben Yedderism. Just wait for it. De Jong, you through ball. Look at all that space. No one is there to help out. This is a walk in the park. And then, ugh, get off me. Get off me. That's where you hit the shield and I missed the finish. I totally butcher the finish. But that's on me. My, my opponent moves the goalkeeper. He's reading me pr properly. Good for him. High risk, high reward. He gets the reward. Thankfully, in this case, we're able to swing it around and we score anyways. Rashford, cross the body, maybe a little more classic. Just 48 goals and 20 assists throughout this weekend league with Rashford. But that is kind of the dream scenario when you not only have a wing outlet, but where you know you can hit a through ball. And it's a complete 1v1. Those are my five primary methods to getting out of the backfield or progressing the play, beating high pressure, beating team press, and you will need it. I do want to add in and reiterate, you can also beat a high pressure player by Tiki Taka. Quick pass and move. That works. It's definitely an effective method as long as you don't make a mistake. And that's kind of why I didn't showcase it. If you're struggling with getting out of the back, and you probably are if you're watching this video, me telling you pass and move and have all these little intricate side steps and, and be able to bring the beautiful game together under the most difficult of circumstances is not necessarily realistic. If you've already mastered these other five, sure, welcome it into your gameplay. I salute it. But if you aren't reading the game quicker or you weren't prepared for the pressure that's coming your way, I'm not willing to gamble that. Why would I ticky talk out of the back? Why run that risk? I talk about it time and time again, but this is not Thanksgiving. You don't get to eat for free at the table. I'm not cooking for you. It's not Christmas time. I'm not Santa Claus. I'm not giving you presents. It's not New Year's. We're not spending time on a rooftop together watching fireworks. None of that is going to go down. But if you've enjoyed everything, please drop a thumbs up on the video. I have a lot more content coming out for you, for you, for you, for you, for you. ASAP, ASAP, and comment what do you want to see next? Tutorials, tips, guides, I've got you covered.